This time on Pedalbox, things are heating up as we install the cabin heater into our car. And we're going to risk it and put some more British Leyland parts in the car. Here I have a compact heater enclosure. It's a nice little piece of machinery designed to go in like kit cars and all sorts of other like retrofitty sort of stuff. It's got a heater matrix inside the box, four little air plenum outlets that are all individually removable so we can change these to any size we might need them to be. A blower motor with three different speeds and heater connections that we need to shove hot water in from the engine. So this is gonna sit in here just above the passenger's feet like that, which is fairly unconventional. Normally it would go the other way around fore and aft, but because of the packaging constraints we're under, that's the way it's gotta be. Now we're not 100% on how we're gonna plumb it yet, but we're fairly sure we're gonna use one of these vents as a windscreen demister. That's an IVA requirement. If you have a windscreen, you've gotta have a means to defog it. You can use one of them as a footwell heater. So we're probably gonna split that off into the two footwells to get a bit of, a bit of warmth onto our feet. And the other two vents, we're probably gonna duct part way up the car into a kind of face vent, or so something a little bit nearer the two occupants. And that uses all four of our outlets which should be an interesting plumbing challenge once we've got all this together. And uh, I think now the main thing we're trying to focus on at the minute is getting hot air from, hot air, hot water, sorry, from the engine into here. So we've got a few coolant lines that Aid's gonna show you now. Now I've been toying with the idea of just teeing off from the lines that already run down to the radiator. And that would seem like the very simplest way to do. However, there is already a local high point at that end where it comes up over the uh, front of the radiator mount to drop down and run around through that system. So we don't really want to add another higher point in the way of that and it's going to make it very difficult to bleed at that end to make sure that the whole system is full of water. So the other option is to run a separate set of coolant lines from our thermostat housing and all of the water management down here where it will direct it to the heater matrix or not depending on the temperature of the engine. So this line in the back which you may be able to see just behind this boost pipe we've actually looped around as a bypass for the time being so it would just feed straight back in. Now we're not going to do that anymore we're going to come off there and we're going to use some of these pipes which came out of an MGTF and we thought about using them a while back and running them down through the center with the main water pipes and running it that way but we decided against it and that's when we went with the we'll just tee off from the front uh, and do it that way. Now we've decided that that's not the best way to do it. And instead, we're going to run a pair of these pipes that I prepared earlier uh, down the side of the car. So it'll come in right next to the passenger drop up and go into the heater matrix that way, which is very, very convenient. We also have a nice route. If we come around across the top of here, we can go straight through and down where the boost pipes are on the other side of the car and we can drop straight through and along the side of the car. We don't necessarily need to punch any holes in any sheet metal anywhere, which is very, very convenient. So we're gonna chop this down and make a new section of hard line that will go across that way. And we'll basically cut it about here and then we can run flexi from this section down onto the other lines at the side of the car. So we've taken the bypass off from our heater matrix inlet and outlet on the back of the engine and we've raided the hose box, as you can see from all of the discarded bits around, and we found and cut up a couple of pieces of hose that fit reasonably well without putting too much torsion and uh, deformity into the hoses themselves because we don't want them just collapsing and closing up. So these will go on from these points around here. And then to go down onto the ones on the side, we've got some 5 8 inch heater, heater hose which will just run down and we'll add a little bracket onto the side of our battery bay, onto our battery uh, holder, which we can attach it to so it's not going to flap around the very back. And then we just run forward. Now we can start installing the heater matrix. Well, mounting's nice and simple. We've made a couple of little metal brackets that just sit behind all of the screw holes. There's a sort of screw hole on each corner. We've made these brackets up. We're going to weld the brackets to the car and then we can screw the box onto the brackets. So obviously we've got it all screwed together to align them and everything. Just going to pop it in place, see where they line up there, sand all the paint off, tack them in, we should be good. Don't forget to check out shop.pedalbox.show for our range of merch and patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show to support us from as little as a dollar a month.
There's a small snag with the hoses. Although the TF coolant lines that we've got on the side and back of the car match perfectly what's on the engine, these are all three quarter inch or 19 mil ID, and the heater and the hose we have for it is 5 8 so we can't quite get it all to stretch over. So we've got a couple of adapters and a few new pieces of hose coming to sort out the back half of the system, and that means that for the, for the time being, we've moved on to trying to plumb the front of it. So 5 8 hose fits perfectly onto the heater, which is convenient. Now to make sure the hoses don't wobble all over the place and end up getting abraded through the side, we've made up a little clamp here that's just gonna hold them in place. So we're gonna weld this onto the body rail here, and it's made of a 32 mil P-clamp that we've sort of opened out and attached onto this little metal frame. So obviously the frame supports it, and the clamp is just gonna go around the hoses and it's gonna fit into the little slotted end there. We're gonna put a bolt through there just to set the, uh, set the tension on it appropriately for the hoses. Well, the heat is in. I think we can call that a pretty good success. Now, the nice thing about having this in is it does kind of tell us uh, where our dashboard can go. So the big thing that kind of held us back from doing any of the framing and structure and everything for what would eventually become sort of the instrument cluster surround and all of the, all the kind of uh, fascia here was that we didn't know how much space our heater was gonna end up taking up. Of course, now we do, so we can start work on the frame. Now, we're not entirely sure how it's gonna work out. Uh, Aid's got the steering column just behind the camera there, so we're gonna slot that in, kind of get a feel again for where everything lines up and then from there, we're gonna do a couple of tests as climbing in and out of the car and just see how much, how much clearance we need on the passenger side. If you follow a line from the top of the heater box here all the way out to our relay box, you can see we've got a little bit of a problem. The relay box is really about as far out of the car as we can survive the dashboard being, just because you know we still need room behind there to get our hands on the uh, on the key switch and on the other controls and everything. So we've got a, a sort of imaginary line about here that's as far back as we can come into the cabin. If you follow that along, that doesn't actually clear our heater box. So we're probably gonna do some kind of asymmetric or staggered dash. We're on the driver's side, it's gonna be nice and neat. It's gonna be tucked quite close up to the bulkhead, not a whole lot here. Whereas on the passenger side, we're probably gonna bring the dash out quite a lot further, kind of use it as a little bit of a shelf, maybe a sort of, you know, improvised storage area and just kind of take up a bit more room because we've got that freedom. But now that the heater is in, we do know what sort of shape that can take. It's been a long time coming, but nearly two years after I'd initially started building the scaffolding and the frame and everything on this car, we finally got the kind of upper body line that's going to come back more or less to our kind of not quite door thing. So this line here is where we're going to carry on this wing panel all the way along. It's not actually going to be this ziggy zaggy shape that we've got here. That's just a skeleton, but we're going to fold over another piece of sheet metal over the top here, much the same as the front wings already are. So we're going to carry that line along as far as we can. The wing mirror is still going to sit in the back here, so we're going to have like a nice notch taken out of the sheet to, uh, to wrap around that. But apart from that, this is actually more or less complete. It finally gives me an idea of what the plan was for this, uh, for this line up here, because I've always had a hard time picturing all of this. So I'm quite glad that's in. So with the passenger side of the dash kind of defined where its front edge is, we can work on the driver's side. Now we're going to work pretty much to the same limits as what was built onto the TT and the A3 around this section of the column. So there's this dip in the shroud and that's where we're going to build a framework round. Indeed, we've already built part of the framework and this basically drops in over the top here and still leaves enough room for this to go up and down and to come forwards and backwards towards the driver. And this just runs across on towards the fuse box and we need a nice big opening around this side and that's what this frame is for. So you can see how this fits around the steering column and this second piece just adds onto the top of it and goes around over there creating an outlet or um, an aperture that we can get through into all of the fuses and all of the relays. So we get this welded up and then start working on a couple of other bits and we should be pretty close to having the entire framework of the dashboard or lower framework of the dashboard completed. Well, the frame's done to go around our fuse box. This is going to be sort of the basis of our dashboard, but we've started putting bit, some more bits of the car together. We've got the steering wheel on and a seat in so that we can start figuring out roughly where stuff around this has to go. And we have bumped into a small problem. This top inside corner of the frame clashes ever so slightly with our clocks. So we've got to lock, the, uh, lock that corner off, put a nice little 45 degree piece in, and hopefully that buys us enough room that we can get the clocks in where they need to be. We can't lift them up too high because then we start losing visibility out the front. We could put them in the middle, but 
it just feels kind of goofy. So we're, we're hoping to dodge that one, get the clocks in the middle, drop them down a bit, knock them into this corner. Well, another fairly major milestone achieved. We've started to get the dashboard in and I'm really happy with the framework that we've got around there, even if we did have to take, what, three attempts at doing it? it yeah, it's kind of gone in, got cut up a bit, a little yeah. bit of a change here and a modification <laughs> there. It's, it's gone a bit yeah, via, we, via, via. Yeah, we've also had to slightly adjust this side so that the corner down by the gear stick isn't such a massive um, knee hazard, let's say. You just gouge your shin if you're taking it down, and that would fail us, our inspection for roadworthiness, so we changed that a little bit as well. But otherwise, that's looking pretty good. The next big one for the dashboard is getting the gear stick cables. Yeah, that's kind of a big purchase compared to yeah. a lot of the other stuff that we've had for this car, which is all like free and cheap bits for the most part. Yeah, we need to get some custom made cables three and a half meters long and then attach them onto the gear stick, obviously, and then route them all the way around and through. So we can't do too much more on the upper structure of the dash until we get that in, because we also need to work out how we're going to mount the rest of the dash onto the gear stick and secure the d gear stick. So. Yeah, you yeah, said gear stick a lot. <laughs> yeah. And you can go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy flat caps, beanies, t-shirts, both long and short sleeve, as well as hoodies and stickers. If you want to help us buy the gear shift cables we so sorely need. Yep, and if you want to support us more directly, you can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. Support us there from as little as a dollar a month. Uh, we've got a couple of tiers there. The $5 and up tiers get access to our Discord server where we're all sort of chatting about our projects and Aid's got some lolf updates in there, I think, ready to go. Yep. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time.